You know how there's just some people, when they walk in the room, they have this aura that just screams winner. Their aura is just like, this person's got it together, they have charisma, they have this feeling about them that draws you in, and they just, they have this raw confidence, this winning vibe. And there are other people where they walk in the room and they have this kind of invisible, battered dog kind of feeling. And if you were to bet your money on one of the people who is going to win at life, you know which one you'd pick. So what is that? And what leads to developing that kind of vibe or that kind of energy that is everything is always happening in my favor? Well, in this video, I think I'm going to talk about one of the most important topics I've ever brought up. So stay tuned. What's up, guys? Alex Hine, author of The Habits Book, Master of the Day. So below this video, I've included a free journaling worksheet. If you're someone who wants to try to get their life together and take it to the next level, learn how to set effective goals. The first link below this video is for this free journaling worksheet as well as email series you'll get every week. So obviously what we see when you see those two people walk in the room, it's almost like the movie cliche of the jock and the nerd. The jock walks in all puffed up, smiley, happy, ready to go. What's up, bro? And then the jock <laughs> looks at the nerd who's like hunched over with the book bag like, Nobody make eye contact with me, please don't punch me. You know, the vibe without analyzing anything else, the body language says the internal state, right? The body language is the external mirror of the internal emotional state of a person almost every time unless they're acting. So a person who's typically in one of those more elevated states, whether it's just courage and confidence or inspiration, they're inspired, they give off that feeling to you. But a person who's in the opposite state, who has this feeling of, I don't know, I'm worried, like kind of ambivalent about life, stressed, a little depressed, a little anxious, you feel that too. So the first thing is we're feeling a person's confidence, but that's not what this video is about. Behind that confidence is a person who has built a life and they've seen a clear pattern where the winner has consistently seen these wins in life. They're more likely to get the jobs they wanted they're more likely to reach their dreams and their goals. They're more likely to have the person they ask out say yes. And the loser, to use these loose terms, is more likely to not see the things they want have happen. And so individually, these people have developed these life stories and these narratives that things generally work out for me or things generally don't work out for me. But what is behind that? The layer even deeper. Now you guys might know I used to have this website called Milk the Pigeon and I still have a book called Milk the Pigeon, a field guide for anyone lost in their 20s. And I'd coached probably at least 300 people one-on-one -on -one going through their 20s and untold thousands, tens of thousands of the same emails or thousands of students going through my programs. And one of the main trends that I noticed that was immaterial, that was more invisible, was that the people who consistently had life working out for them like life was working in their favor. The things they wanted loosely happened, more often than not. Those people, the only difference was that they were listening to their gut and had the guts to trust their gut. So they had that same feeling that we all have. Oh, like, I like that person. Should I ask them out? Or I've always wanted to do this thing. Should I do it? Or my family wants me to do this career, but there's something else really, really speaking to me, really exciting me. They felt the same feeling, but they had the courage to act on it. Whereas my other clients, the people that were just always in this kind of like, I don't know, yeah, well, I'm, I don't, yeah, I don't know, like this ambivalence that lasted decades, they either didn't make a decision, couldn't recognize their gut, or they recognized their gut, but the buts, all the fears, all the rationalizations, the mind, all that stuff came in, and so they never acted on their gut. So I found that the through line, like the thread that linked a generally positive life where things worked out in the favor was the person's ability to trust their actual gut or hunch or instincts, but then act on it. Now, Richard Wiseman is this researcher who actually had studied lucky and unlucky people. And in one of his studies, he actually put an ad in the newspaper. This was actually like a, a experiment where they were going to get paid based on if they, you know, solve this problem. And basically they had to see the number of photographs and count them and then report them. So the people that counted the right number would get XYZ dollars. Now what he found was that they actually, the researchers put in huge font 
on the newspaper on one of the pages, stop counting, there are 43 photographs in this newspaper. Now, what he noticed in his research was that the, quote, lucky people, self-identified as lucky, they were more likely to notice that humongous boldface print that said that and then stop the experiment and get their money versus the unlucky people were not as likely to spot the huge thing in front of them giving them the answer. So the weird thing about fear is that fear kind of narrows the looking glass that you see through life until eventually it, it just squeezes it shut and you can't see anything anymore. And of course, life is not going to work out for you if you keep going on dates and you don't trust the gut feeling you have about that person. Your mind likes them. They're successful. They're decent enough. They're interesting. But something about your gut says there's something off. Of course things are not going to work out if you keep getting high-paying jobs that you hate. Of course things are not going to work out if you keep making pro-con lists, but something about you just really wants to move to San Francisco or New York or Houston, Texas, but there's no logical reason for it, so you're just like, why would I do that? Of course your life will not work out if you're getting the message, but you're just throwing the compass in the ocean. So let's do a little simple practice you can do in your daily life. The simple practice is, first of all, the idea of the body scan or body compass that I've talked about here before. It's just recognizing the feeling of attraction to something or aversion to something. Like think about a food you really like, what your body language does when it's near you, or a food that absolutely disgusts you, your facial expressions, your stomach feeling, the way your body moves. Pay attention to that and then start documenting how that shows up when you go on dates when you interact with certain people, when you see that job ad pop up, when you have these discussions with your friends and your family, when you think of moving to that place or going on that trip, how does that body compass register? Your compass is giving you data all the time. It's showing you where true north is. But for so many of us, fearing it and not listening to it or recognizing it but not acting on it is like having the compass to true north and throwing it in the ocean or throwing it in a ditch. You have the answer, but you're deliberately putting C because you're too afraid that it could be so simple that it really is just A. So my experience, why some people continually feel blessed, backed by guardian angels, guided is a good word, is because they trust that inner feeling that, yeah, I, this, I feel like this is the thing. This is the direction to go in. And then they make the brave decision to actually trust that. That is the number one thing that I've noticed. So this is a big video and a really, really important topic. I hope you take it seriously. That's my mission, my tiny daily habit for you today. Now again, I've included a journaling worksheet below this video, that first link. You'll also get an email every week on how you can use journaling to go through this exact process that I just talked about. All right guys, before you go, there's two related videos for you here that'll help you do that process.